We, all, we welcome everyone to this September 11th meeting of the 20, 2023 meeting of the Corsican ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it's not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby in the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is a responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. So first things first, we are going to, we're going to do the pledge and we're going to do the invocation, but I'm going to ask you to stand for a moment of silence for all those we lost 22 years ago on 9-11. We're going to ask the students of Fannin Elementary to come up and do the pledge, the pledges for the United States and Texas flags. We have Anna Glover, Parker McCain, Josiah Grigsby, Malachi Grigsby, Sophie Cabrera, and Ollie Abreu. Yep, come on. This way. This way. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Under the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're also going to ask Dr. Danny Reeves of First Baptist Church to please lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you for having me. Let's let's pray together. Father, it's always a great honor for us to pause and to recognize you in a place like this, Lord. Um, you are King of Kings. Uh, you're Lord of Lords. You have been that throughout history. You will be that throughout eternity. And Father, I'm thankful on this day that, that we can pause and we can remember that we truly do still live in the greatest country in the world. And Lord, our hearts are heavy. Lord, over the remembrances of 9-11, of everybody in this room, I would imagine that's old enough, remembers where we were and how we felt and, Lord, how we cried out to you. And, and I pray today, Lord, that, that we would um, take time to pray for those, Lord, who lost so much, but that we would also remember how we felt. Lord, it was a, it was a call to return to you. It was a call to return to our country. It was a call to be, to be one and be unified. And so, Father, just give us that again. I know that our world seems so divided in so many ways, so we just pray that your spirit would help us be unified. And today, Lord, I'm, I'm always thankful to stand in this place because I, I just think this is really where your heartbeat lies in so many ways. Lord, I mean, you're the one that said, let the little children come unto me. And so I just thank you for all these people around me. Lord, I thank you for the children that just led us in the pledges. I thank you for the teachers that guide them. I thank you for every um, member of personnel on those campuses, for administrators, for Lord, for our superintendent, and, and for this school board. Lord, I, I love them, and I thank you for them. I thank you for the service they gave to my children in CISD. And I pray now that you would just give them your blessing, your favor. Father, my prayer today is that everything they do, that they would listen to your spirit's voice, that they would follow your lead, that they would strive in every way possible, Lord, to do your will. And Father, I pray for our community that, that we would be what we need to be to support them and help them. God, because this, this is our part of the world. This is the area that we're responsible for. 
So God, help us to be good stewards here. Help us to be good citizens here. Lord, help us to be good people here. And help us most of all to be pleasing to you here. Father, we pray for your wisdom, your guidance in this board meeting, and we pray all this tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go to the superintendent's report. Tonight I have several items, and one of the most fun things I did all week last um, week was when we received a box truck full of supplies to um, assist our teachers and students um, with autism. And we got these through the Freestone Navarro Bi-County Co-op Initiative, and I, I just had a great time looking at that box full of supplies and thinking about what that was going to mean for our teachers and our students in the classroom. Our teachers got to um, ask for some of the things they wanted. Um, they got a lot of wonderful learning uh, materials. So that was a pretty exciting thing. I want to thank Ms. Crow for her leadership in, in that because it was really fun. I don't know if you saw the picture of us throwing the Velcro up into the air, but it was really fun. We had a great time with that. We had a special ring ceremony at the pep rally um, last Friday. Our powerlifting champion from last year, Lakias Kelly, um, received her ring as well as her coach, and our, her family was there. So it was really special. We got to have her um, upstairs in the press box during the um, game, she and her family, um, Friday night, and we did a little fun thing that was on the jumbotron before the third quarter. So that was a really special event. This week, our varsity football team's uh, football team opens district play at Ennis, and next Friday night, and <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me, <laughs> which I'm amazed at. Really. <laughs> um, and next Friday night is homecoming. We expect a big crowd um, because the Tigers are going to come out to support our team and to meet up with their class classmates. So we're excited about that. And tomorrow night, our volleyball team is playing at 6:30 at Hillsborough. So we encourage everybody to come out and support them. This is the only board meeting we have in September, so I want to remind everybody that October is National Principal Appreciation Month. And in Corsicana, um, we really do appreciate our principals. They work so hard for our students and for for everyone, every day. So um, it's a great time to say a special thanks to them in October. Also, our Education Foundation Gala is October 7th, so that's going to be a fun and festive evening. They're going to celebrate the 80s, so I look forward to seeing everyone there in their 80s attire. Um, please, if you haven't already, get your tickets to the gala to support our students and staff. And next Monday is a student holiday, so it is a work day, for, but it is a work day for our staff. And now I'd like to finalize the um, superintendent report by asking Mr. Ron K. Part to come forward. Um, he has a special announcement. Thank you, Dr. Frost. Members of the school board, uh, Ron K. Part with Line Barger, uh, your delinquent property tax attorneys. And uh, I'm here yet again to make you all happy. We're having Christmas in September today uh, due to some uh, very successful tax sales that have previously uh, gone. I have uh, three checks for the district tonight in excess proceeds. And as you recall, these are uh, non-itemized uh, funds so that the board can use them as you see fit. They're not earmarked for any particular uh, line item in the budget. So tonight I have $23,841.57 in checks to present. Thank you very much. And I look Thank forward you. to seeing all of y'all at Tassa Tasby the end of the month. Okay. Yes, sir. We're going to win. We're going to win. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Looking forward to seeing everybody at the end of the month. Thank Come you. back anytime. Yeah. Come back anytime. I'll be back always. Thank you all. And this Thank is you. a great segue into just a comment um, of any additional funds that we have. Um, we're still working on drain for our um, teachers and staff members, uh, children for a daycare center. So every little bit of money that we extra money we get, we're putting into um, that renovation, and that's going to be a really exciting opening when we get to celebrate the hundredth anniversary of the building, and also invite everyone over to see our new childcare facility. So we're excited about that. Thank you. 
All right, we'll go into our action items. Uh, first up will be Jared Gordon with the Collins Scholarship Financial Report. And I, I feel so bad. We always say Jared Gordon, but <laughs> we know you're coming too. I'm letting you present the good news. Okay, good. <laughs> Good evening, my name's Casey Fagan. I'm going to go over the basic performance information for the Collins portfolio, and then I'll hand it over to Jared to give you all a better understanding of where you sit for the school year in terms of income and required scholarship distribution. So if you'll open your packets up to page one, um, we can see a complete breakdown of your portfolio. I'd like to point out first that about 5% of your portfolio is currently sitting in money markets and cash equivalents, which is about $930,000. Um, about 90% of that cash is income cash that's ready for distributions and because rates are still rising money market is currently paying about 5.22 percent so uh, you're definitely in a good position to hold some extra cash right now as it continues to provide income for the account below that is your taxable bond portfolio which is just over eight million dollars or 43 and a half percent of your portfolio a majority of those bonds are in US government agencies but there is good exposure across the board your equity portfolio is made up uh, roughly 48 percent US equity equities and three and a half percent international equities uh, which totals about nine and a half million dollars at the bottom of the page you can see that your ending market value as of August 31st was eighteen million five hundred fifty five thousand nine hundred $171. And to the right of that, you can see that there was a slight loss of about 1.36% over the last month, but that's your fiscal year to date, which is the same as your calendar year to date. Return was 8.86% gross of fees. And if you will jump ahead to page three, we have some return information on an asset class level. I'm going to focus on the fiscal year to date return column, uh, which again is the same as your calendar year to date, as well as the last 12 months return column. Uh, since obviously we're starting a new school year. Uh, first, I'd like to point out the unique relationship between money markets and taxable bonds in relation to rising interest rates. When interest rates rise, your cash becomes more valuable. It becomes more expensive to borrow cash. Uh, so ultimately, your cash begins to generate more income. Uh, you can see that your money market had a return of 4.15% for the last 12 months, which is just 15 basis points below the benchmark. Inversely, that means that pre-existing fixed income securities become less valuable. And you can see that your taxable bonds return just 0.0%. 0.07% for the year. In comparison, the index lost 1.19%, so we did make up some pretty considerable ground there. As the pace of rate hikes begin to slow, your performance in taxable bonds will begin to improve, and you can see that with your fiscal year-to-date return, which is 3.32%, which again outperformed the index this time by nearly 2%. Uh, your equity portfolio has been performing well in both domestic and foreign markets for the last year, although it has been more difficult to keep up with the index year to date. And that's primarily because we've seen a huge comeback for growth stocks that aren't paying dividends like Tesla and Netflix. Uh, however, your U.S. equities return was 16.39% for the last 12 months, which outperformed the index by more than 1.6%, and your international equities returned 11.46% for the last 12 months, which underperformed the index by about 1%. Totaling all that up, you can see that your gross of fees return for your year to date was 8.86% compared to the benchmark return of 9.29%. And your last 12 months return was 7.82% compared to the benchmark return of 6.54%. So you're definitely in a great place considering all the changes that we've seen throughout the economy and the broader market. Uh, turning to page four, I'd like to point out the investment efficiency graph. I'd like to remind you that your portfolio is represented by that small black square, and the benchmark is represented by that gray square. Our goal is to is to make sure that your portfolio is northwest of where uh, that gray square is, and that's exactly where you are. That indicates that your portfolio is taking less risk and still providing greater returns, which is very difficult to do. Now jumping to pages seven and eight, this will provide a view on an asset subclass level. Uh, this is going to be a closer comparison between your portfolio's performance and the relevant indexes. <clears throat> I just want to point out a couple important numbers for you, uh, again, looking at the fiscal year-to-date column. 
Uh, first, I'd like to point out communication services and consumer discretionary sectors. Uh, those are two sectors where we're underperforming, and you can really see how growth stocks have continued to skew market performance. Your, your portfolio takes a core approach, so we're placing more emphasis on value and income distributions as opposed to growth. And still, you can see those are really good return numbers with a 20.58% return in communication services and 10.58% in consumer discretionary. Secondly, I'd like to point out the energy sector. Uh, energy was last year's best performing sector, and this year you can see that it's nowhere near uh, best, uh, returning just 2.13% uh, compared to the index return of 3.31%. Next on page eight, you'll see information technology, which has obviously taken off. And that's really what's driving the majority of these returns. Uh, your portfolio's tech sector returns 60.69% year to date compared to the index return of just 44.66%. And that would be thanks to Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA. Uh, lastly, the laggard for your year-to-date period was utilities with a negative 16.44% return. Utilities was another really good performer for us last year, and obviously now it's the worst. So uh, this is a really good illustration of why it's so important to build a well-diversified portfolio. At the bottom of the page, you can see that your asset subclass return for your fiscal year to date was 8.86% gross of fees compared to the index return of 8.12%. And for the last 12 months, your portfolio returned 7.82% compared to the benchmark return of just 5.99%. At this point, I'd like you to flip ahead to page 13 as Jared comes up to discuss the income position. That is as fast as I've ever heard Casey talk. And I think, I think Scott told him to speed it up as fast as possible. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask. Of course, our doors are always open. On page 13, this, these next few pages are the assets that make up the uh, scholarship fund account. Uh, did want to really talk about where we're at as far as income cash goes, because that's what applies to you most when you're talking about scholarships. Uh, in the middle of the page, Casey had highlighted about 927000 is readily available for scholarships. Uh, that number is going to continue to grow. We've got another 350000 that's invested in short duration bonds. If you go back to, I guess it was January of 22, we had the dilemma. We had all this cash earning nothing. Well, now, fast forward, you have all this cash and it's just earning a lot more cash. And so you're you're really in a good spot. Uh, I want to applaud you all. I know this year you've been a lot more aggressive as far as your budget goes for scholarships, and I think it's a good time for that. One, you have all this excess cash, but two, because of the interest rate environment we're in, you're going to earn considerably more. Um, we're forecasting your income for the fund just on your assets, and that's your bonds, your stocks, but also your oil and gas properties to be over $750,000. That's a far cry from where we were at just a few years ago when we were under 500000 And so good time to have a lot of cash, and it's a good time to continue spending more and more cash. And so if there are any questions, uh, 750000 And that's on top of what you already have available. So you're you're really primed over the next couple of years to reward a lot of scholarships and reward even more scholarships. And uh, just today, we had a check from some a new oil and gas property out in Upton County, which is in the Midland area, for thirty-one thousand dollars. So, Mr. Collins knew what he did was doing a long time ago, and so it's just a expansive portfolio that just keeps throwing off a lot of income for you. So, so Jared. We have 927000 available. Correct. We'll have 750 to to that. Correct. And that's not considering any scholarships or anything. That's just on top of that. But around 750000 and that that figure could be a little low, honestly. It's, it's more of a conservative figure. But uh, oil and gas prices had dipped throughout the summer. Uh, we've seen oil prices get back in the 80s. I think that will probably hold for a while. If it climbs even higher, your income will go up. So 300 of it will mature uh, before February of 24, and then you have another 50 that will be early in 25. And so the the good the good problem is is right now cash is is king. When it's earning over five percent, you're not taking any real risk and you're you're getting interest payments monthly on that. So.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Navarro Central Appraisal District Board nominations. All five positions. That's next. Um, we may nominate all five positions. You do not have to. But um, this is just a nomination process, and then we will allocate our votes at a later board meeting. All right, so we've got, you know, we, we had last year was Father Ed Mont and Rosie Trevina, right? That was our two. That was our two people that we had on our, for our committee. Um, and I think that they're, they're happy with them mm -hmm. right now. So I think they've been doing a good job for us. So, you know, for me, I'd be okay with leaving them there, but... So we just have to nominate. We have to. We have to nominate each one of them, and to do it. Yep. And each so one of the five. No, no just the just, just the two. You, you can you can nominate five people. You can nominate one person, two people, three people, four people. It's up to you how many you want to nominate. If you want to just stick with the two that we tend to elect, then that's fine too. Yeah. It's however you want to do it. But they're but they're happy with the two that we have. Okay. Mm -hmm. I feel comfortable in nominating just the two that we have nominated prior, versus trying to nominate these other other three. I don't. Okay. So I would rather nominate uh, Father Ed Monk and then uh, Rosie Trevino. Okay. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to nominate Father Ed Monk and Rosie Trevina for the Navarro County Central Appraisal District. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it. And we have nominated Father Ed Monk and Rosie Trevina as our delegates to the Navarro County Central Appraisal District. <coughs> RFQ on grounds. Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, members of the board, um, thank you. Today I'm going to um, just kind of summarize and ask you to review and approve the RFQ for our CISD lawn service. Uh, we went out for RFQ at the beginning of August. We only received one bid back. So what is included in that bid is CHS, the grounds and maintenance for CHS, Tiger Stadium, CMS, Collins, Bowie, Navarro, and Fannin. So with that, uh, Banks to McMath is the one person that, had, that submitted the proposal by August 24th. Um, you'll see that attached in your board book. We still have, I just wanted to make sure you understand, we still have a grounds crew. So in that grounds crew, we have six uh, young men that work in that department, and they are in charge of mowing and maintenance for th this building, CHS Ag Barn, the Ag Barn area, Carroll Elementary, Drain, Sam Houston, Travis, and the Boys and Girls Club. Um, also in your, what I included in there were the, um, the approximate acreage that's on each one. So like Carroll is an, over nine acres. So that does, they mow that every week. So they'll continue to do that. They'll work with Bankston McMath on a weekly basis as well so that it all looks uniformed and it all, like he's going to be working with Judson, our grounds um, supervisor on what it looks like and takes to take care of all of our um, lawns and maintenance. And so it all looks uniformed across the district. When our maintenance crew is done with mowing, they have other things that they, they are responsible for, such as uh, they move all of our furniture, if they repair desks, things like that. But we have a lot of movement when, with teachers. Um, they work on the practice fields. They do all the striping for the practice fields. Uh, they've done all that for the band as well. Um, assembling furniture and assisting with any maintenance orders that Ben and his department still need help with. So um, I also attached just a sample 
calendar for our grounds crew. So they mow admin, um, Carol, Sam Houston, and, and Travis on a weekly basis. And then you'll see some things that we do on a just a bi-monthly type thing. So um, I have also attached how much it would be for the f next five years from Bankston and what that would look like and his um, insurance is also attached. Any questions for me? What, uh, currently, I know the what, what? The, the only thing we added was Fannin Elementary. So in the past three years, he's done everything except for Fannin, and we added Fannin. Stephanie? Yes, sir. Um, I know it's down on the insurance. He's got general liability. But why aren't we requiring workers comp? He does have workers comp, I thought. Let me look. Because he has one employee and it's his dad. Well, yeah. but you can still have workers' comp on yourself, though. Um, yes, he does have it. We did require that. Uh, hang on one second. If I did not attach that, I will send that to you guys in the morning. I'll make sure he sends me an updated one. Okay, and then I have a question as well. Um, so in the proposal notice, it does say um, that these, the bid was for a five-year contract. Mm -hmm. Are those numbers based on five years, yes. or are we able to do a shorter period of time with the same numbers? Uh, so basically what he did was it was an increase of 2% due to like mm -hmm. gas costs, things like that. So um, if you see on the, just on this sheet right here, you'll see each year he just, that will be our price locked in for five years. Does that answer your question? A little bit. So if, um, so I'm just thinking five years is a long time to have a contract. So um, if we did, for example, a one or two year contract, like a one year with a one year rollover or a two year contract, would the numbers still be the same? Uh, I don't know, ma'am. They were not in the previous one. Okay. So what happened in the previous contract was that there was a, an increase each year. But we could also, like if, go ahead, sorry. Uh, Dr. Brown was asking if we'd have to do an RFQ and the answer, every year. So the answer to that was if you did a two-year contract, what you could do is an automatic rollover um, if you put that in the motion unless either party wanted to, um, wanted to end the contract. So you wouldn't necessarily have to do an RFQ every time, but you could if you chose to do that. It would really be at our discretion if you if you made the motion that way. Okay, so you're saying do a two-year and then a one-year rollover up to five years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that way we don't have to go back for RFQ every single time. Yeah. If, we, if we like what he's doing, we just continue yeah. on with the program. Yeah. We don't like Well, that, that way, that way uh, him or us are not bounded that way right. and that's where a lot of the government contracts are so I think that that's, that's a good idea mm -hmm. and with the board's permission I'll get with our attorney and make sure that there's language in our agreement so that it says that's the way it's going to be yeah. okay. any other questions do you have any questions other than that and just doing the math, it looks like it would cost more than what his proposal is if we could even find the employees to hire. Correct. And then plus maintaining the equipment. That was the other. And a lot of times the mowing has to be done not during school time. Mm -hmm. So you'll see banks in a lot during at late nights or on Sundays or on the weekends. So that's, that's another issue with grounds. I mean, when you're mowing nine acres just at, at Carroll Elementary, we have a lot of acreage. I did not realize how much acreage we had until we went into Google Maps. And, you know, and he um, has like this drone thing that showed us all the acreage from what he, he mows currently. And he's been doing it for several years. I think he's doing a fantastic mm -hmm. job. So. It's, the, it's the best they've looked in a long time. So he does it. He, he takes care of it, and he takes pride in what he does. So that's good. Because I can remember back in the day, back several years ago, well, 
it was a lot of complaints about the loan. So, you know, this, you know, yeah, not too. getting done and stuff. So, yeah. Well, and he's also willing to work with Judson, who's over our grounds crew, to work with him on, ex you know, exactly what it looks like and takes to take care of, a, you know, a lawn. Because it is a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, I move that we approve the lawn service contract for a two year with a rollover up to five years. Rollover and each year. Rollover each year up to five Total. years. Total. Total. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve a two year contract with a rollover each year for up to five years. Total. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we have approved that motion that it be done for two years with a one year rollover each year for up to five years. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay, now with consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion for consent agenda. I move that we approve the consent agenda. Or second? Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we have approved the consent agenda. Ms. Harrison, is there any more audience for guests? Right, thank you, ma'am. Okay. We are going to adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you very much.